you can work on something else. But if you do, you will be missing how to use uh, light to communicate with your camera, which is not something that we have covered, and how we can use sunlight to communicate. So those are the, the goals, the two goals that I have to convey in these uh, sort of 35 minutes or so. Uh, so until now, what we have been seeing is uh, an LED and mainly a photodiode, which is the nice demos that we have had. But we can use different transmitters and receivers for visible light communication. We can still use an LED and a camera, and you will see that it behaves completely different. And if we don't have any lights, we can still use sunlight and a photodiode or a camera to communicate as well. OK, so those are the two main parts that I'm going to be delivering over the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, first part, LED to camera communication. I have a question for you guys. How many of you know what is rolling shutter? Good. OK. Next question. Was this one taken with a rolling shutter or a global shutter? <laughs> this picture, it was taken. It's a fan. It's rotating. Was it taken with a global shutter or a, ro uh, or a rolling shutter? Global. global. Rolling? Yeah. Global. OK. So let's first have a good idea about what it means to take a picture, because it can mean different things. Most of us will understand taking a picture of something like this. You have a fan that is rotating. You take a picture. And instantaneously, you see the position of the blades. So if you have a light modulating in that way, it would mean that where your light is modulating, your camera will see the whole light on or the entire light off. But that's not how most cameras work. Most cameras have something called the rolling shutter effect. And those are the cameras that are in your phones. And the reason is that it's much, more, it's much cheaper to create cameras like that. So if you take a picture with your phone, that same fan that is rotating is going to be this image here. It's going to be distorted. Okay? And if you take a picture of a light that is modulating on and off, what you will see is this sort of zebra pattern. So now what we are going to do is to explain how this is occurring, how is this zebra pattern coming into effect, and how we can use that to communicate information using a light source and a camera. So the rolling shutter. In essence, it means that uh, if you have an image, let's say that is just me, and you have a matrix, which are just your pixels, global shutter means that all the pixels at the same time will be open, right? And then you will collect data. But in a rolling shutter, it's not like that. A rolling shutter will first take the first row, which is this one here. So you will take a picture of my hair, process it. Then you will take a picture of my forehead, Glasses, mouth, and so on and so forth. So this is picture one, picture two, picture three. And when you finish taking the picture of the first row, you have a little bit of time called the readout time. So this is kind of called the exposure time. So why is this important? Because if now you see that same fan, and we take pictures row by row by row, a global shutter will get an instance of the red part, but the rolling shutter will get the blue lines that you observe there. So that's what happened with cameras, OK? So you say, OK, I don't want to use a photodiode. I want to use a camera to do my VLC link. So what do we do? And then we are going to have, I think, three or four steps. So let's just start with step number one, which is related to the exposure time. The exposure time is just simply the amount of time that you're going to open the camera to receive light. Have you seen those pictures in which somebody puts a camera at night and then you just see the lights moving around? Right? That's because you open your exposure time to a very, very long time. OK. So um, in this image here, this is going to be the amount of time that you're opening your row for. So if you have a light modulating. This is on. You're going to be receiving all that light. So it's going to be a white bar. If you see this one here, it's some part is on, some part is off, so it's going to be light gray. And the one that is here is going to be all when the light was off, so I'm going to start getting just that black line. Right? So in that way, you're going to have these patterns that we are observing here. Now, what we will see later is that these links are very slow. And by very slow, I mean like 110 bits per second, 100 bits per second. It can be very, very slow. 
So you say, hey, I want to transmit more data. And you start increasing the speed of modulation of your light. And all that is good. But if you don't reduce your exposure time, what is going to happen is that then this time is going to get the average of the light that was sent here. So everything will be just gray, 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 and you will not be able to decode any information. So the step number one, if you want to use LED lights and cameras, is you minimize the exposure time. You just go into your camera settings. Some versions of cameras and Androids allow you to do that. And you get the minimum exposure time possible, because that's going to allow you also to increase the modulation frequency. OK? So then you do. Uh, this is just an example of an image with, uh, with an exposure, exposure time of 161 microseconds. And this is an image for six times roughly that exposure time. And we can start seeing that things start getting very blurry. All right, so then it's minimize exposure time. So once you minimize your exposure time, you say, okay. I would like to know how many rows am I going to have per symbol. You don't want to have just a single row, depending on where you, the, the, the accuracy of your camera, depending on the uh, uh, ambient light that you have external to you. You may want to have multiple rows per symbol. right? So then what you do is you just have a very simple equation in which uh, this part here is just the duration of your symbol. This part here, assuming that the exposure time is going to be very small, is just the duration of the time that you're going to be using to take in that row of a picture. You divide those two, and you will be able to get the number of rows per symbol, right? So let's say this is going to be a 1, and this is going to be a 0. Um, if you increase the modulation frequency, then you will have less rows per symbol. So here is a very low frequency, so each symbol is very wide. You start increasing it up to the point where you will not see pretty much a difference between them because of the, what we discussed before. So where is the... Uh, so then if we do that, then uh, you set your minimum exposure time. And in step two, based on that minimum exposure time, you get your number of rows per symbol. Um, step, step three is overcoming the effect of distance. And this is kind of a very tricky thing. Look what happens. Until now, I've been showing you pictures in which the whole frame of the picture was covered by the light. And that's not going to be the case usually. What is going to happen is that, well, here you don't see it so well. But if you use a relatively small light at 50 centimeter distance, you're just going to be covering this area. And if you go further away, you're going to be covering a smaller area. And so what's the problem with that? That you start losing data. Why? Because if your light is turning on and off, and you want to capture information, you will start reading the row that is here. But there's no information there. So you're not reading that packet. Then your rows are going to start getting the light. You get information, part of the packet. After that, you read something that is not being covered by the light. There's going to be jitter between this picture and the next one. And all that, you are losing information. Right? So you could try to synchronize your system in such a way that you ask your camera to start measuring exactly when the light is going to be modulated, but that can be pretty hard. So. If you go and you see the specs of your camera, the best thing that you can do is you go and check the size of your object. In this case, it's going to be the LED light. You will be able to see this distance di, the image from the lens. So this is where actually you have all the pixels collecting information. And with very, very, very simple geometry, what you will be able to see is what is the size of that LED light here, but in the number of rows. How big is that going to be? The further away you go, that size starts decreasing exponentially. And why is that important? Because that's the maximum size that you can have for your packet. OK? Uh, with some very simple geometry, what you can get is 
the total number of rows in the image, so that would be this thing here. You divide it by the number of rows per symbol, which is what we obtain in step two, and now you know how many bits you can encode in that packet. Okay, so uh, with the step two, you have a step three, and then you basically see the maximum number of bits or symbols that you can encode in an image or in a frame. After you do that, you say, okay, I know the size of my image. I know how many symbols I can put. Then you need to decide on your modulation scheme. And you have many options. A couple of them is Manchester encoding, right? So where the one maps to one or zero or zero one. And then you can transmit the data and this is the pattern that you will observe. Or what you will do is you use FSK in which you change the frequency and the symbols that you're going to be obtained. And then here you send another frequency to match the delimiter factors between those two. Actually, one thing that I forgot to mention in the prior slide is the one way, uh, this image is not so clear. One way in which you could try to overcome and make sure that every picture has a packet is by putting two packets per image. So you will not be able to see it that well here, but roughly this is a preamble. There's a packet here. And that same packet is duplicated. So if you put two packets per image and you have your light, no matter where you are, you will be able to receive at least one of those packets completely. There are other methods that you can use, but this is the easiest and quickest way. It has an overhead, not the most efficient, but that's something that you can do. So then you choose your modulation scheme. You start sending your data. And this is where things just kind of, uh, normally your cameras will have 30 frames per second. So this is usually what you would expect. Uh, and if you use BFSK or FSK for a distance of 1 or 1.5 meters, 1.25 bytes, 10 bytes. That's usually what you get. So why are people doing this? It's just because there are lots of cameras everywhere. But otherwise, you know, people will go for the photodiodes. And the problem here is not your phone, actually. Your phone already has a photodiode that you can use. But it's just that mainly Android actually does not allow you to do a high sampling rate with that photodiode. You have to use your camera, and your camera is very slow. So uh, you could just go for higher data rates with better cameras. But that's just comparing apples with oranges. We saw all these works that you're going to see up there. And then what we try to do is we try to recreate all those works with the same LED, the same camera. And then what we found out is that Manchester and FSK are just your best options. So there were these multiple options there. Out there. 